Uh, this forum is hosted by the Garden City Area Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Government Affairs Committee. Tonight we welcome the following candidates who seek election to the Garden City Community College Board of Trustees. Vanessa Guyton. Did I get it right? Yeah, you did. All Good right, job. thank you. <laughs> Aaron Kucheri, Dr. Scott Myers, David Rupp, Shanda Smith, and Beth Tedro. Candidates, we'd like to thank you for joining us this evening for the candidate forum. The process for tonight's forum will begin with each candidate providing a two-minute opening statement, followed by the question and answer session. And we will conclude with a two-minute closing statement. The order of candidate introductions was drawn at random, and that order will be reversed for the closing statements. statements. Each candidate will be allowed two minutes to respond. The order of candidate responses will rotate for each new question. This is a closed question form. No rebuttal questions or answers will be permitted. And without further delay, let's begin tonight's program. Candidates, are you ready to begin? Yes, yes sir. Beth, oh, opening statement, God. please. We start with you. <laughs> I, I'm last in the alphabet. I hope you it. Good evening, and thank you all for coming. This is a great crowd, and thank you to the Chamber for hosting and the city for helping. My name is Beth Tedro, and I'm a native Garden Cityan. I uh, am a graduate of Garden City High School, Garden City Community College. By the way, both of my daughters, Shelly and Kristen, are graduates, as are my, my uh, I had two brothers and three sisters that also attended Garden City Community College. So uh, we're a great, oh, and I forgot to tell you, my mother started back to school when I was a freshman. Now that clipped my wings a little bit. <laughs> um, after I left Garden City Community College, I went to the University of Kansas and obtained my, my bachelor's degree and then later on my master's degree at Fort Hayes State. I came back to Garden City High School, taught science and math for two years. And that's all I was going to be, was two years at Garden City, and then I was headed to the big city. What happened, I fell in love with my community. I fell in love with my school. Um, I, I um, have served, or I did serve, Garden City High School, as I mentioned, for two years, Garden City Community College, for 47 years, and retired in 2009. Since 2009, I have tried to uh, and this is my whole agenda to to give back and to pay forward. I um, taught math when I started. I uh, was uh, dean of women, counselor, recruiting coordinator, and the last 26 years, I was a dean of student services. I am running, as I mentioned, to give back and to pay forward. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Aaron. As a, trustee of, as a trustee of Garden City Community College, I want to ensure that transparency, integrity, and that GCCC remains an affordable two-year educational institution that provides the highest education and technical training regardless of the student's gender, race, or religion. I believe in a high standard of integrity and ethics in my personal and professional life, and I commit to the same as a tr possible trustee. As a trustee, I will make sure that the CEO of Garden City Community College is always acting and working in the best interest of the college. My door will always be open to the community to hear their concerns and suggest appropriate avenues for them to address it. I promise to always be focused on the Students First initiative that has been instilled by the current administration and that our every decision is made in the best interest of the community and the students. I also realize the social and economic impact of Garden City Community College, and we should maximize the impact that GCCC can have on the Finney County economy. I am probably one of the youngest uh, candidates to run for trustee of Garden City Community College. <laughs> um, however, I have experience from serving on several state and local boards. Uh, I, Became a Finney County resident just five years ago after moving uh, from Scott City whenever I accepted a job right after graduation from Kansas City, Kansas Community College, where I graduated with my Associates of Applied Science with, uh, in Mortuary Science. I grew up in Scott City with both my parents as educators, and my father taught English composition here for Garden City Community College on campus for 16 years, an additional 12 years uh, online and as outreach with the Scott City School District. 
Some of my best memories growing up are coming to campus and hanging out with people like Beth Tedrow <laughs> as a kid um, and with the other students on campus. And I also understand fully the legal and fiduciary responsibility that is bestowed upon an elected trustee if I am elected. And I will honor that. Thank you, Aaron. Shannon. Uh, thank you to everybody for coming tonight. And uh, thank you guys for all the work you did to host this. And I'll start by introducing myself and telling you a little bit about me and why I would like to serve Garden City Community College as a member of the Board of Trustees. I'm Shanda Smith, and together with my husband, Skeeter, we operate Skeeter's Body Shop. Our children are grown. Um, our youngest is currently a student at Garden City Community College. Um, I was born here, spent most of my childhood here in Garden City. I graduated with a Master's in Business Administration from West Texas A&M University. Um, I've been involved with the Endowment Association for a number of years, uh, including serving as Vice President and President. I've always been very passionate about education and serving our students. Watching, watching a student grow into a confident young adult and achieve their educational goals is an inspiring thing to watch and, and get to be a part of in a small way. For these students to be their best, we really must give them our best. As an institution as well as as a community, we are blessed to have a community that generously supports GCCC financially. And because of this, I feel it is imperative to safeguard, safeguard those monetary resources that are given to us and ensure that every decision made is done in the most fiscally responsible way possible. I would like to see the bond with the community and parents strengthen so we can move forward together to ensure a safe, supportive learning environment for every student to thrive and grow. Thank you. Thank you, Shanda. Scott. Thank you. Um, my name is Scott Myers. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here. I really appreciate uh, the chamber hosting this and for everybody coming out, particularly given the chiefs are on right now. That's so, right. I appreciate you, <laughs> you being here. Anyway, my name is Scott Myers. I am a uh, lifelong educator. Um, I served uh, 10 years as a high school English teacher, and I came out to West, Southwest, I'm from Topeka, Kansas, Eastern Kansas, where my teaching career was. But I came out to Elkhart, Kansas to serve as a high school principal, and ultimately, ultimately became the superintendent in uh, Elkhart. Spent nine years in Elkhart, it's a great place. My youngest, my oldest daughter rather, uh, decided to go back to go to school at Kansas State University, and so the family decided, you know, she couldn't be that six hours apart from us, so we moved back east. In reality, it wasn't about her, it was about mom and dad, obviously. Uh, spent 12 years back in uh, eastern Kansas uh, as a superintendent, then I went to higher ed and served as an assistant uh, professor. Spent time, five years, at the Kansas State Department of Education, where I was the, uh, served as the director of teacher licensure and accreditation. Then I went to China to help op open an international boarding school in Shenzhen, China. Family issues, family health, whatnot, brought me back. And I, can't, I served as the dean of students at an inner city school in Topeka, Kansas. Ultimately, uh, the opportunity presented itself to go back into the superintendency, and I leapt at the opportunity to come back out to southwestern Kansas. I'm a unicorn in that people from eastern Kansas aren't looking to come out to western Ka southwest Kansas, but I am, or I was, and I'm still here, uh, because I really enjoy the lifestyle. Uh, the reason I'm running for the uh, Board of Trustees is I am a servant leader. I like to uh, serve on boards. I've done so at the local, state, and national level. Uh, I attended a, a junior college uh, as a first two years of school, so I know the advantages and the unique position a, a community college is in to serve the community, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight. Thank you, Scott. Vanessa. Good evening. Thank you, Chamber, for hosting this event and having us this evening, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, my name's Vanessa Gaitan. People kind of mess up with my last name, but it's okay. Um, uh, I was born and raised in Garden City, Kansas. Um, I dropped out of high school my senior year, two months short of graduation. And um, I didn't think high school or school in general was for me. I decided to go back to school as an adult when I realized I really couldn't make a living um, spending so much time away from my family without working overtime so much. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted my kids to have a mother that they could look up to and say, hey, I want to go to school just like my mom did. So I decided to go to Garden City Community College and I thought I was just gonna get an associate. I thought, you know, this is all, this is what I'm gonna do, that was my goal. And it was through Garden City Community College where I learned the value of education. And at Garden City Community College, 
there was partnerships in social work with the University of Kansas and with Fort Hayes State University. So through Garden City Community College, I was able to obtain my bachelor's and my master's degree in social work. Uh, right now, I currently work at Genesis Family Health as a behavioral health and substance abuse therapist, which is something I really enjoy. And I stayed in Garden City because there's a huge need. Right now, I am the only um, Spanish-speaking addictions counselor in Southwest Kansas. So it's, I'm thrilled for that. But most of all, I will say the reason why I'm here is because I'm a social worker. I'm a social worker at heart. I, um, I represent and advocate for my community, and this is the community that I love. And um, I want to ensure that others have that accessibility and the opportunity to attend college and um, have a higher education just like I did. And I want to ensure we remain those partnerships with those higher education. Thank you, Vanessa. Thanks. David. I'm David Rupp, and the reason I'm running, I just believe in public service. You know, I was born and raised in Garden City and Southwest uh, counties. We moved out to Fran when I was really young. But I've been involved in public service and paying back to the community for years, starting with the flood, filling sandbags, helping out in Valley View Cemetery with the tornado hit. So and then I, after I graduated from Garden City Community College, I got on the police force here. I want to clarify something. I did resign from the police department. I know some things say that I retired, <laughs> which is not correct. And to me, I want that information to be correct. That's my integrity. So I just wanted to clarify that. I worked for a private business for approximately six years as a security consultant, and then I was a criminal justice instructor at the college for 10 years. I've been active in Garden City JCs when it was active, helped build the sidewalk out on Jenny Barker Road after a small child was hit. I was on the 3 I committee and worked 3 I shows for approximately 35 years. So, also served on the Housing Authority Board and Traffic Advisory Board. And currently, I'm serving on the advisory board for the uh, Department of Public Safety. I had an interest in serving on the Board of Trustees for several years now. Did run for position in the 2016 election. I've supported the college for over 40 years and want to continue to see it grow and need it. So you can see public service is in my blood, and I wish to continue the service. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, candidates, for your opening statements. At this time, we will, we will begin the question and answer portion of tonight's forum. As previously stated, each candidate will be allowed two minutes to respond to each question. We drew names at random and we'll begin with Dr. Scott Myers. With that, let's begin. Question number one, the Garden City Community College trustees utilize policy governance as its model for board governance. What is your understanding of this style of governance and please discuss your views of the policy governance model. My understanding of the policy governance model is it's a broader um, category of setting uh, goals and then providing the uh, CEO the uh, freedoms to pursue um, achieving those goals. And so it's not the, um, I'm used to working with school boards where it's a lot more the uh, policy, Basically, any policy is created by the school boards, and then as a superintendent, it's my job to implement them. Uh, so this, it's a broader uh, scope of power, if you will. At the same time, it's representative of the community, uh, and so it, it's important to, as has already been spoken, um, maintain transparency. And then I believe that one of the main, main pieces that has to be in place for any um, public entity is there has to be trust. Uh, foundations of trust and so it's essential to uh, reach out to the community and get the ver various uh, inputs and uh, beliefs that need that would represent that community and then bring them forward and then looking back into the governance policy uh, structure uh, see how it fits in together with that so it's like I said it's a more higher level of um, oversight uh, where the CEO has more freedoms in implementing the uh, grander policies than what, what I have been involved in with school boards. Thank you, Scott. Vanessa. Can you repeat the question, please? 
Yeah, the Garden City Community College trustees utilize policy governance as its model for board governance. What is your understanding of this style of governance? And please discuss your views of the policy governance model. So policy governance, I know it's to provide leadership and guide the president who runs the college just to ensure that the college is at a right place, ensure that everything's going smoothly. And it's also, its purpose is to have a vision of the future, to see how we can move forward. Um, I feel policy governance actually works rather well. Um, there's a lot of boards who do um, have this type of um, model. And um, for example, where I work, um, I know that that model's implemented, but I do, you know, I'm gonna have to agree, transparency is important, <coughs> trust. Um, but I also believe we need to ensure that we have the right leadership in place. And I think Garden City Community College has done a good job now of putting those in force. Okay. Thank you. Beth. Uh-oh. <laughs> I worked at the college with uh, the policy governance. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Or Dr. Clifford and Lon Pishney because they brought this, or Lon really brought it back to the college and uh, it works well. The model is that the Board of Trustees hires the president and the president is responsible for the rest of the employees at the college and the programs. It, uh, it works well. It, uh, I think at first we struggled a little bit because I think we might go off on a tangent and say, oh, wait a minute, that's not the policy governance model. So it, it, it takes a great deal of thought as you work with the process to make sure that you're doing it the way it should be done. Thank you, Beth. Aaron. <coughs> Policy governance is a definitely an almost foreign language to most people whenever it comes to uh, governance policies of boards and organizations. I think in a perfect world, policy governance works. Unfortunately, um, the past couple of years, it has failed us with Garden City Community College. Um, I feel that it could work with the right leadership in place. I feel that it is definitely something that uh, if the board and the candidates and the trustees understand it better <coughs> could work, which I sat through a couple sessions with Lon and I appreciate those sessions because I understand it so much more than what I did 20 some months ago uh, and have a much better aspect on it, how the board sets the goals, the CEO, the president of the college interprets them and then brings his interpretation to the board uh, to make sure that that is in line with the vision for the future that the board has. Um, I do feel with the le current leadership, policy governance is going to work out amazingly um, and that it will, with work on the three new trustees and the uh, three trustees that are remaining, uh, with more work on understanding the ins and outs of policy governance, it has the potential to be uh, very good for the college. Thank you, Aaron. David. Uh, policy governance, is, I understand it is again, you know, the board sets the policies and the ends what they want seen happen in the college. Kind of like goals. They give the authority to the president to achieve those goals in any which way. Then they go back and interpret what he brings to them. Versus means. Um, there's various oversights, different policies, different um, time intervals on when those are reviewed and checklisted to make sure they meet all of the, the different criteria. And I, they're continuously reviewed, each individual policy is, um, to ensure their continued effectiveness and changes are made as necessary. The board's role is, is more of a long-term view of where they uh, want the big picture of the college to be. And it's the administration's responsibility for the planning, the who's, what, when, and where, um, to get into the minute details of day-to-day -day operations. And it's, it's more the board's role to set the long-term vision and let the administration figure out the best path forward to achieve that goal. Thank you, Shanda. 
Vanessa, start with you on the next question. What do you think is the greatest challenge facing Garden City Community College? I honestly think one of the biggest, there, it was great. They have great instructors, very qualified, but the only thing is we're limited to the um, vocational trade jobs we have. Um, you have nursing, you know, uh, for example, you know, we, Tyson's a large plant. We had an industrial maintenance program once. Um, that's no longer there. And I actually know people who took that course and were able to gain better employment and um, stability because they had that experience. So I think maybe having more options for the students um, and more options for that distance learning that I was talking about, you know, those partnerships with the universities and, um, it, you know, we have like the teachers and we have the, for the education, the program, but maybe bringing in like a um, bachelor of nursing, you know, something that will help um, with the demand of jobs. And if we had more opportunity for the students, I think it would be overall good for the community. Thank you, Vanessa. Beth. The needs of the community and our students must be met. When we put a technical or program, workforce development program in place, this is where we need great communications with the community, with Southwest Kansas, state, what have you. I, uh, the distance learning does enhance this greatly because you can stay here, you can start with your LPN, get your nursing degree, you can get your bachelor's degree, and, and, and so on. This, we 